Okay, so we've got the conclusion from the first iteration. The key insight was, well, we don't know enough about the relationship between electricity consumption and generation. Indeed, the local generation brings a new dimension to home energy as it is no longer about reducing consumption but balancing this consumption with the local generation. Let's go one step back and get the bigger picture. This simplified diagram highlights the key elements of the electricity grid. The most important with electricity is that generation and consumption must remain balanced at all time. So at the bottom of this diagram, we can see the large power plants making the bulk of our electricity transported over long distances at a very high voltage. Then going up, some distributed generation from renewable sources such as wind turbines. Here the challenge is the dependence on the weather. And finally, in the top right corner, we have the low voltage electricity distribution to households and industries with solar panels and consumer appliances. We can see on the left diagram that domestic consumption represents 30% of the overall electricity consumption. It is quite a significant slice of the pie. We also note that transmission and distribution represent most of the electricity losses. So these are two indicators that households can play a significant role in the electricity balance. A few more details about the grids. Here is one day of electricity grids data in 2015 in the UK. In the top left chart, we can see the carbon intensity of each energy source, which is how many grams of carbon dioxide is emitted to generate a kilowatt hour of electricity. It is no surprise that coal and gas come first. At the bottom, the electricity generation highlights daily pattern of each source of electricity. We retrieve the yellow dotted line from the solar energy, a source that we cannot really control. We don't control the sun. At the top, in red, the gas consumption is following the demand that, a, uh, that is a, a responsive source of electricity that can easily be turned up and down based on the demand. Finally, the flat blue line represents the electricity coming from nuclear power plants, a production that is very slow and expensive to adjust. Thus, the main takeaway here is better to produce and consume locally, avoiding transport, transmission, and the need to compensate with other resources that are much less green. This energy balance influences the net financial cost for the householders depending on the country they are living in, the environmental impact and the energy losses. As it is a complex system, we defined metrics and built a simulation to, for different strategies. What happened when we export everything to the electricity grid and re-import it all? What happened when we are able to store this energy in a battery to use it later on? And what if we export only what we do not consume? The key message here is that the definition of metrics and the exploration of many different possibilities through simulation helps going into the right direction. The data exploration helped us to characterize and understand this complex dynamic. Then we zoomed in the washing machine consumption data, an appliance available in all participating households. For each household, we mapped overall the washing machine consumption. This chart shows an example of such map across the week and the time of the day each color represents the washing machine consumption of one of the 18 households. To our surprise, 
most of the washing machine cycles were run during the day when the sun is shining. No problem at all. However, when we compared washing machine cycles against local generation, this is how the data looked like. Here we can see on the x-axis the washing machine consumption while the y-axis represents the percentage of electricity coming from the solar panels for a given cycle. So for most households, a colon is formed on the x-axis. It means that they used mainly one cycle, be it cotton 90 degrees or colors 30 degrees, whatever, and consuming the same amount of energy each time. However, this is distributed across the y-axis, meaning that the percentage of energy coming from the solar panels is highly variable from one cycle to another. So we conceptualized data-driven solutions that connect the activity of doing the laundry with consuming green energy, with a focus on metaphors. Starting from the top concept, we brought a typical historical data chart along a more innovative weather forecast metaphor to convey green energy availability in the coming days. We used the battery metaphor to convey the idea that right now there is a quantity of green energy available both at the house scale and at the appliance scale with the washing machine. That's what we can see in the, the middle row of the concept. Finally, some dials were focusing on the instant, the metaphor of the speed meter. For example, how much solar energy is produced right now or how many washing cycles have been done till now. That's, that's the bottom row. For the prototype realization, we've made the explicit choice to go as fast as possible, faking most of the data with a Wizard of Oz approach. Our aim was to capture the reaction of participants while experiencing these metaphors. We used an approach called technology probes, in which participants are experiencing a potential new technology and report on their contextual experience. In this iteration, there was no particular product analytics involved. Instead, the probes helped us as a conversation starter during interviews to engage with participants and understand what is key in the relationship between generation and consumption. Timing appeared as a very strong element in this relationship, being able and aware at the appropriate time to intervene, to consume at the greenest time. Another key finding was that of prediction with the ability to anticipate and be on time to adjust the daily routine. Wrapping up, we've conducted extensive simulation to understand the best strategies combining objectives such as financial cost, environmental impact, and energy losses, strengthening our aim to support local generation and consumption. Zooming on the washing machine consumption, we saw that doing the laundry during the day is not enough to get it powered from green energy. Connecting local generation with doing the laundry through metaphors, time and forecast appeared as two key elements to support electricity demand shifting. That's it for this iteration. I hope that it gives you another round of ideas around data-centric activities. In the final iteration, we'll explore how electricity demand shifting could take place, discovering that in a very close interaction with participants.